Come on up, Linda. <laughs> this is our time where we do our sharing the journey. And uh, this month we have Linda Dre Nightingale. And uh, welcome. Oh, it's a pleasure to be here with you, Jeff. Good. So, we'll just wait when that happens. <laughs> So um, I sent you some questions, and we always talk about, you know, our spiritual journey. And I, I like to start with that first question that just says, where did you come from? Like, what was your family of origin like? What kind of faith traditions did they uh, either embrace or leave behind? Where did you come from? Well, I came from a mother who was Catholic, quite Catholic. Um, and a father who came from uh, Bavaria near Munich, and which is the Catholic region of Germany. So he was sort of Catholic, you know, with mom, we went to church every Sunday. Um, we went, I went all the way through Catholic school through high school. Um, dad would join us oh, on Easter and Christmas, you know, at church. So, you know, I didn't, I didn't know, he didn't read the Bible. Um, mom sent us to catechism school. You know, we had to learn, we had to learn about the, I, I don't know if any of, some of you actually are Catholic, so past Catholic. You would understand it was the, the milk bottle was the symbol you got. I hear some laughter. Um, and if you sinned, there would be little black spots in, in the, on the milk bottle. And that was all your sins collecting. And then when you went to confession, then of course it cleansed the sins. Um, so it was a very old fashioned kind of traditional Catholic at that time. And my mom would say, you know, pray for your dad. He doesn't go to church. And I kind of never understood that because I always thought my dad was a good man. Why would I need to pray for him when he's a good man? Um, so in high school, we had fairly open nuns and priests who taught us. And I remember certainly in junior year in high school, there was a priest who really, I think he emphasized questions, you know, question things, which was very different from the elementary school and all the other education I'd gotten, which was this is the doctrine, this is it. Yeah. And so I took that off to college with me. I went to uh, UC San Diego, so it was, you know, not religious. But they did have um, every on Sunday in somebody's house near the campus where you could walk, they did have a little service. And that's where I really sort of opened up to a different kind of spirituality. So rather than, you know, an example might be rather than Jesus made the blind man see, whereas I had taken it extremely literally that the person was blind and couldn't see, and then all at once could see. The interpretation was more, was this person just blind to some of the world around them? And when Jesus, you know, came in contact with this person, then opened up their eyes in a spiritual sense to more of what the world was. And that, to me, made so much more sense. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, I've come to believe that Jesus wasn't any more special than 
kind of a lot of other people in the world who've come along. Mm -hmm. Because I firmly believe we are all children of God. Right. Not that Jesus is the only son of God. No, no, we're all children of God. Right. And that Jesus um, teachings are to look at not literally, but what does it bring to you spiritually? Mm -hmm. And so, you know, there was a transformation. I didn't go to church much after, you know, mm -hmm. through college and after college. Um, and, um, you know, I think I, my spirituality was more being out in nature. Mm -hmm. You know, it was what it came to be. So when I think of you here at Adara, I think one of the first um, images I have of you is working on the side of the <laughs> hill behind the Sunday school classrooms or the wing up there planting native plants and, uh, you know, trying to uh, keep us green uh, in the landscape there. So talk a little bit about that um, transition, not just spiritually, but how that may have influenced you career-wise or, or any other transitions that occurred, because I know that you're very engaged with the environment, with social justice, with other things. So what was that, how did that all start to fit together for you? Um, hmm. Well, I think um, I became interested in the natural environment just because we would camp every summer. My dad really liked the outdoors. And so we did a lot of outdoor stuff, you know, whether it was camping, hiking. And I think I found a peacefulness in the outdoors. There, you know, there's a lot demanded of you because you have to deal with the elements, but that's, that's kind of very visceral and not a lot is demanded of you in terms of interacting with people and trying to, you know, process everything that's going around you people-wise. And I just, so that became, I think, um, a draw for me, what the natural world brought me. And in college, I, I was a biology major, and I love getting out there. But I mostly did a lot of botany, where you could just go look at flowers and, and see their beauty. <laughs> And I guess the spirituality was not that it was created by God, but that evolution created this, some process that was going on in nature, which we don't always understand. And I, for me, I'm drawn to that mystery of, of nature and the process of how things work together and we just don't know but it does work so that kind of drew me then into sharing that with other people and so i was um i'm trying to think of all the different jobs i worked in a lab i worked yeah i've had some actually some crazy jobs in college i did um had to make money one summer, so I went up to Lake Tahoe and I worked in one of the casinos as a kino runner. <laughs> but in my off time, what was I doing? I was out hiking, <laughs> you know. So um, worked as um, a, a naturalist, worked as a school um, a, 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 at outdoor science for school kids down at Palo Alto Baylands and up at mm -hmm. Foothills Park. And mm -hmm. yeah, so I think the wonder of nature is what brought me to that. I'm ten, I want to ask you a question that wasn't on the list that I gave you. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> so I don't want you to feel too much on the spot, but maybe there's a way to just kind of make a connection. I. I just find it interesting that 
as human beings, we look out into nature and we see that kind of transformation that occurs through evolution or through some other kind of process. Do you ever see that happening inside yourself? Yes. I think there are times when I feel like a flower blossoming. There are times when profound things happen, like when my children were born. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's messy. It's just like nature. Mm -hmm. It's messy, but yet it's just growing and blooming. That's a short answer. It's a really good answer. <laughs> so, um, I think it's a very powerful answer too. So thank you for, for being willing to answer that. Um, how did you come here to Ladera Community Church? What was what brought you? Oh, that's an interesting story. Um, so the woman who married us, who was the wife of a, a, a Stanford classmate of John's, um, was a UCC minister. And one um, just absolutely amazing woman. And she married us. And then when we had Marie, our first daughter, I was sort of toying with you know, maybe I would like my children to be brought up in a faith tradition, whatever faith tradition that is, mm -hmm. I was okay with because I wanted her to understand the world. And I felt you could not understand the world unless you had some religious background. Because mm -hmm. so much of the world is based you know, so many people believe in Allah and Buddha and, you know, there's all these spiritual figures. So um, we were in um, a kind of a spiritual group, a Sunday night that this woman and her husband were also part of. And, you know, Marie was born and she said, I think you'd really like this church. We just moved up to Los Troncos Woods. And she said, well, it's right down the road from you. I've given a few guest sermons there. Mm -hmm. And so we came to Ladera. And I mean, that was it. It was the people at Ladera who were absolutely inspiring. Mm -hmm. Just amazing people. There were still some of the founders of the church who were here then, because this was 30, 34 years ago, mm -hmm. about. And, you know, yeah, we walked in and we saw a bunch of gray hairs, and they were amazing gray hairs. <laughs> uh, I mean, and I guess what I find is readings don't inspire me like people do. Mm -hmm. it's, it's the people here who bring me to try and be a better person. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's what I'm looking for in church, is I'm looking for those things that inspire me to be better. And it was here. Mm -hmm. It was Jane Land's husband, was the one who every Sunday came up and talked to us. Mm -hmm. And it was, it was just this welcoming spirit that was here. Mm -hmm. Like they were just so happy to, to see us. They were happy to be here. Mm -hmm. um, and you know, it's still somewhat the spirit when I look around. Yeah, that's good. So, um, that spiritual sense of being a better person and and having it from being around other people inspiring you is, is there anything can you give us some examples of, of people that have been that for you just like you did with um, 
uh, Jane's husband, sort of in a things that have touched you in ways that you would like us to have here or bring here? Uh, yeah. Um, it's finding comfort or satisfaction in no matter what you do. Mm -hmm. So there's a woman named Betty who would quietly come in um, to the church grounds and she would do all kinds of little jobs around the church. And mm -hmm. one day she came in and she polished the cross and um, she just said, I said, God, you know, Betty, how do you do all this stuff? I mean, a lot, lot, you know, a lot of it was just menial stuff. And she just said, it's joyful for me to give. And she looked at the job she was doing as giving. Mm -hmm. And it was, you know, it, and I, I try to incorporate it. As John knows, I hate doing dishes. <laughs> <laughs> but the idea that if I felt like I was giving, that to me is the God inside of me, to, which I believe that's where God exists, is inside of every person, mm -hmm. not anywhere else. Even inside of plants and animals. Mm -hmm. um, that to me is the is just the true part of of living is just to be able to find purpose in each thing you do. I'm not sure if that no, kind of answers it. No, that's a really good answer because I felt like you were describing yourself a little bit as we were going along there with all the little things that you do around the church and it's you know coming here during the week i look up many times and i see you doing something that's going from either watering plants or mm -hmm. or helping out in the uh, kitchen and so you embody that same inspiration for me in that way what is something about you that probably we don't know that you think's a key to understanding Hmm. Linda. Uh, I mean, you just gave us one, but mm, I'm, mm. I'm asking for a little bit more. Yeah. Um, I f find it hard to deal with some of the difficult things in life. And uh, some uh, two of them are that my children do not have the health that I would like them to have. Mm -hmm. um, you know, Marie has some intestinal issues where she has to be very careful about what she eats, mm -hmm. and yet she takes great joy in food. And I just, I want her to never feel that, to feel discomfort. I want her to be able to feel, you know, and pleasure and enjoyment. And my daughter Krista has also some physical ailments. And it just so much, I want them to be able to, to go out and have the health that I had when I was their age, to be able to do everything. And it's, it's hard for me to accept that. Mm -hmm. It's hard for me to accept that we have people living on the street, mm -hmm. that they should be able to enjoy a home like I enjoy a home. Those things I have a, a difficult time accepting. And, and therefore, you know, I don't always know I work so effectively to change things mm -hmm. because I maybe want to fix the instant thing but what you need to do is fix the big picture. The systemic thing or something that's sort of deeper in the... Mm -hmm. I think that that longing that you have there is very similar for a lot of people that feel 
a real strong sense of what it means to have love for someone, you know, just like you have for your daughters, um, that kind of love that sort of extends out from the family to the world and, and to people because every woman is the daughter of someone, every man is the son of someone. Um, and it's a, a thing I think as a parent that is one of those sort of deep seated ways that, that we connect with God, that, that that longing that's there that carries us out uh, into the world with that same hope or that same joy or that same concern is such a powerful part of being a human being. Mm. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, so thank you for sharing that. I think it's, it's important for us to know those things about each other because it's easier for us to connect to the journey that we're each traveling on. You know, it's why you go to see them or why you go to be with them or they come to be with you. Uh, and it's the same thing when we come here to church each Sunday, even though it's a kind of an external thing, it feels like that to me, that, that there's that possibility of connecting between each of us in a way that brings that love, instead of it being in the background, it kind of brings it into the foreground and helps us. And, I, and it, it takes sharing like you just gave to do that. So that's a very sweet and wonderful thing for you to give to us that way. And, uh, thank you. All right. You have anything else you'd like to share with us, or is there? Um... Uh, I guess asking everybody here to just keep on inspiring me. <laughs> <laughs> okay, good. <laughs> you know, and that that it's 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 just been such a joy and a pleasure being a part of this church. Has brought a lot to my life. Thank you for being here and thank you for sharing with us. Thank you.